Should you max Guan Yu in 2022? I'm gonna break down in this video and I'm gonna give you the best talents for Guan Yu and best pairings in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdom video. This is your boy Legend Ronnie and today I want to talk about Guan Yu. It's been quite some time since I've done his Commander Spotlight. So I definitely want to review that, give you his best talents, his best pairings and answer the question, is it worth it to upgrade him in 2022? Because we all know it is quite an older Commander. He's been introduced into the game in 2020, quite early in the 2020 into february because i recruited him the moment he was released which this kind of tells you that it gives you question marks when it comes of upgrading his skills like should you spend uni your universal sculptures in guan yu because you never know the next uh, infantry commanders might just be a better version of guan yu the same thing that happened with alexander alexander is still used on the field but for players that are doing few amount of infantry marches, like myself, I replaced Alexander with Scipio. And now I'm doing Guan Yu and Scipio. So I do have to say that since Scipio has been released, it's kind of rejuvenating this march. It's kind of empowering Guan Yu again to be useful again on the field. Because back in the days, Guan Yu and Alexander, I was starting to feel that is being a target and is very easy going down so i was always having thoughts and i was hoping for a commander to kind of replace guan yu i want to keep alexander because of his capabilities of debuffing his shield his instant damage as well for this uh, in and out type of game that you're doing like you're selecting a target and then he's retreating then you retreat again you select another target so this instant damage helps specifically if you're not generating rage bar right so you can pound the the mark that you're swarming these instant damages that have a chance to proc they always help out because you can just touch a target for like three seconds and you can do some skill damage so you're hurting the target so that's one of the reasons why i also like alexander on the field on top of his debuffs his uh, other capabilities as well so guan yu for me would have been expendable if there was another better version uh, of Guan Yu, like something with AoE as well, maybe a little bit of, of debuff, even if it's not silence, but something to be useful for the murder ball, for the field fighting, as well as uh, some mobility that he has and other damages, and maybe a little bit of defensive options, maybe some defense stats, maybe some health stats, maybe some normal attack damage reduction, skill damage, something that would help the march be empowered but we got Scipio Africanus and Scipio Africanus is rejuvenating my Guan Yu so right now this is the march that I'm doing Guan and Scipio I would definitely love to bring back Alex on the field but I need a another infantry commander that is, is as good as Guan or Scipio or Alex and to be honest none of the other infantry commanders are so right now in my opinion the best three infantry commanders is Guan, Alex and Scipio. Then it comes Harald and some of the, the others. But I wouldn't really do Harald to do Alex and Harald because I've seen myself like how squishy it is on the field. Like when I'm swarming it, it just dies. So with all the AOE and counter attack and whatever Harald brings on, on the field, there is no defense capabilities. While a Guan and Scipio, they do have a little bit of defensive capabilities. And that's where Scipio comes in. You have the shields, you have the infantry health bonuses, and then you have the damage taken reduction every now and then. So there is a little bit of defensive capability that are coming with Scipio. It was the same with Alexander, because Alexander was doing the big shield as well, whenever his skill rotation was coming around. So there was something over there. And then whenever the shields are up, you get a 30% uh, defense bonus. When not shielded, troops led by this command gain attack. And when shielded, troops gain defense, which means that the, the shields should go down harder. So it was helping a little bit in the murder ball. Because, for example, when you get AoE in the murder ball, this 1200 shield is helping you. If you're getting swarmed while in the murder ball, well, this 1200 shield is, is doing jack shit, to be honest. Because 
you're getting so much damage when, when you're being swarmed, it won't help out. But this is definitely helping out when you're just getting random AoE damage in a murder ball. So that's why Guan and Alex was performing so well. Same as Guan and Leonidas, which a lot of people are still doing Guan and Leonidas for the same reasons. Because you have the 30% defense, you have the speed of rage gain, you have a little bit of health bonus um, over here. And then when the march goes under 50%, if I'm correct, you get the shield with a chance, which also helps out the march as well. So we're skipping your Guan on the field for a longer time. And then you have obviously damage bonuses and so on. So Guan and Leo was also performing really well. But to be honest, with the current commanders on the field, it is highly recommended to just bring much higher damage factor type of commanders. If Leonidas, they will ever rework him or give him, let's say, 1,500 or something similar, then 100% he will have a comeback. But with the 600, that's way too low. That's why CPO is uh, way better to be used. 2000 direct damage factor and then you have additional damage as well now if you want to upgrade guan Yu right now in 2022 uh, my recommendation is that you should try to take him from the daily special offer so if you're spending a little bit of money into the game you could go to the bundles and you could go to the daily special offer and right here you have all these newish commanders so if you want to work on Guan Yu, you want to raise him up, this is one of the best ways that you can do it with a daily special offer. Because you want to make sure that you have universals for these newish commanders that are being introduced. You never know, the next calf commander might be another crazy one like Nevsky that everybody wants to have. And if you already spent your sculptures in an older commander, you will have that feeling that you've done a bad investment. So that's why having a little bit of universal in stock, it always helps out. Not just going away and just um, upgrading commanders. You definitely need commanders, especially if you're a new player coming to Season of Conquest. But it also helps out to always have something there. Even enough to a 5-5-1-1 commander. Because you never know, if a commander is really that crazy, even as a 5-5-1-1, it will help you out. Now, if you're not spending into the game and you don't want to go through the daily special offer as a 5-1-1-1, Guan Yu is really good. But when I started using Guan Yu like that, my Alexander was max skill. So it was definitely helping out. Alexander was helping Guan Yu. Then I started investing in Guan Yu skills and I was aiming for his third and fourth skill. Now, obviously, um, you, when you lock the skills, it doesn't allow you to specifically lock a skill of a commander so it might randomly land on the second skill as well and that's when the reset tokens come in place that's why a lot of people are doing even artemisia for example as a 5515 five, five. this is the same thing you can do with guan now if you your guan lands like five two something five that's also really good even five three three five that's also good 5245 would be better or 5155 that would be the most optimal way you have to think about that there is also the legendary tavern there is also the event hers desire and recently they have introduced various other games where um, you can roll for commanders as games i'm referring as events this type of uh, small events two three days events where you can roll for some specific commanders and that's another way how you can also work on your Guan Yu. Or whenever the infantry wheel comes around, you just select Guan Yu and you can do the 10 spins even if you're free to play. So you can slowly, slowly work on your Guan Yu as well as you should work on an Archer Commander or on a Calf Commander whenever the wheel comes around. Just do those 10 spins. You have the free spin, you have the half price spin. And that will bring you to a six spin on the third day. And then you do another five spin. And that's going to be a total of 11 spins. And you get at least five sculptures guarantee. And that's how you can slowly, slowly work on your Guan Yu. And make sure you save as many universal sculptures as possible. Now, in terms of pairings, I highly recommend that you go with Scipio. Now, if you want to do multiple um, infantry commanders on the field then it will be better if you separate CPO. 
and you put Guan Yu with someone else. But this is kind of the go to pair Guan and CPO. I have seen recently a lot of people doing Flavius and uh, CPO on the field. Either they put Flavius second or Flavius first. That's entirely up to you. But I've seen doing this pair and people are getting amazing results. Which means that Guan Yu has to go with someone else. So either you're going to do a Guan and Alex. Or if you're having a Leonidas. If you don't have a Leonidas, I don't recommend investing in him. If you want to buy him from the daily special offer because there's nothing else. You maxed out all the other commanders. That's when I would recommend to spend on Leo. Other than that, I wouldn't recommend because in about four months or so maybe six months we will get the new infantry generation and 100 percent leo will drop even more on the list in some of the kvks i have done even guan and mehmed it's also a nice pair or you can uh, do a guan and uh, honda we have from the leadership that could definitely work as well you get march speed which will definitely help out the march you get AOE from Honda if you worked on Honda. If you didn't work, that's totally fine. Guan and CJ, if you worked on CJ and you upgraded him or you have him as a max skill, Guan and CJ is also a very nice uh, combination to have. It's working pretty decent. But Guan Yu, his best marches is with Scipio Africanus, the prime Scipio Africanus. Then it comes Alexander the Great and then it comes Leonidas. Now a lot of people might just favor Leo before Alex because of his defensive capabilities. But me personally, I'm in favor of Mars Speed. I'm much higher in favor of Mars Speed because Guan and Leo is very slow. That's one reason I didn't really like them. So if you really want to retreat a march and you have Leo in that march, you can pretty much kiss goodbye because you're not going to retreat. There is so much Mars speed reduction on the field. There is so many commanders on the field that reduce your Mars speed. It's unreal. So if you put Leo in any of the marches, you, you just kiss goodbye for every retreating. But again, there is different KVKs and different KVKs. For example, um, maybe now everyone is fighting Imperiums. Maybe some players are fighting with B kingdoms, C kingdoms, D kingdoms, or low A seed uh, kingdoms where you can fight with similar players like yourself who's doing a lot of 5-5 five, five commanders and that's definitely different results but if you want to excel if you want the best of the best then you should definitely work on commanders that work very very well going into his talent tree this has been my all-time favorite talent tree going with the feral nature because i want to break it down to you why i'm doing so much feral nature even though I'm pairing him with Scipio and the expertise of Scipio, it gives me extra rage when the target is silenced. And obviously Guan Yu silenced for 3 seconds. Unless you're hitting on a monitor or a Boudica or Attila or who knows whatever else they will introduce with silence immunity or abilities to remove silence, etc. But right now Guan Yu is definitely silencing some of the targets and... Uh, you will get extra rage from Scipio, which means that if Feral Nature will ever proc, it will get you in an overrage situation, because I also keep Horn of Fury on my Guan Yu. But the thing is, where Feral Nature is really helping a lot. You're swarming a target, target is retreating, you're retreating as well, you get out of combat. When you get out of combat, you lose the rage bar, so you have to build it up again. So whenever you have to build it up again, that's where Horn is very helpful, that's where Feral Nature is very helpful. Even if you're overraging, even if Feral Nature is only going to give you, let's say, 30 rage, 40 rage for that turn and you're reaching the cap, it's still going to help you because you need to build the bar again so you can start pounding the march. Once you build the bar again, you're starting to do skill rotation and then Rejuvenate comes in place as well. And probably at that point, Feral Nature is going to be less impactful feral nature will uh, proc or whenever will proc is going to be a chance that again you will over rage and it's not going to give you the 100 rage you'll probably get another 50 60 but still it will help you fill up the bar faster and do the skill rotation faster this is kind of the theory behind it and uh, i've noticed this because you don't want to chase down a target that is going to drag you in their murder ball or is going to drag you next to their gate 
you always want to stay on your side you want to stay on your murder ball so you always keep doing this uh, in and out type of game you're swarming march then uh, the, that march is retreating or is dying then you have to go back again you have to select a, another target it is a big delay in the game when it is lag so it is very hard to try to keep the rage bar to continue it unless you can anticipate how fast you're taking down a march and you're immediately switching to a march which is something i'm doing so i can keep going on with the same rage bar so even if i didn't kill the target i knew that i've done a couple of skill rotations and i'm just switching to another target so this is my all-time favorite uh, talent tree with the feral nature but i know there is people that are not in favor of feral nature so i got a couple of different talent trees for that matter this is one of the talent trees um, and this is with buckle shield the buckle shield reduces the counter-attack damage taken now you need to understand when is the counter-attack damage taken so the counter-attack damage is happening when you're swarming something so if you're that kind of player that like to swarm flags a lot you like to swarm fortresses you like to swarm rallies then definitely buckle shield will help you out because it will reduce the counter-attack damage because that's basically the only thing you will get when you're swarming rallies, fortresses, passes, unless you're also getting the AoE if the pass or the fortress or the rally has some sort of AoE, then that's going to be extra damage. But if you're not getting any of those AoEs, then the only thing you'll get is counter-attack damage. So if you can reduce that, it would, in theory, reduce the dead that you take considering you're swarming a flag or a fortress, or the severely wounded, considering that you're swarming a rally. It's also helpful when you're swarming targets, but you have to realize when you're swarming a target down on the field, a, a simple march, you're not getting that kind of counter-attack. You're not getting that big kind of counter-attack to say, oh my god, this is super helpful. It, will help, it would be helpful when you're swarming big targets, targets that do a lot of counter-attack damage back. As I was mentioning, flags, fortresses, um, probably even passes, rallies, etc. And this is the third talent tree that I have for Guan Yu. This is an Ark of Osiris specific talent tree. Now, why this is an Ark of Osiris specific talent tree? Because March Speed is very important when it comes to Ark of Osiris or Osiris League. Because you have 6%, 12%, 18% extra March Speed on top of any other talent trees. And of course, a little bit of attack and some other stats that you can get from there, which is obviously much better to pump it on the infantry rather than getting some generic ones with 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 18% march speed. How is that helping you in Ark of Osiris or Osiris League? Well, first of all, you only play for like 50 minutes overall, maybe 52 minutes altogether. Because it takes 3 minutes until the gates open, then it takes probably another 3 minutes until you march somewhere and by the time the action starts and all that. I would say that an overall of 52 minutes you're probably playing in Ark of Osiris. So all your m movements or your actions that you're doing Osiris League, Ark of Osiris matter. So for example, you probably noticed that when a march is getting smashed, it's coming home really fast. And you probably noticed that a double C march, for example... So, or some other marches that have mobility trees and a lot of march speed are coming home faster. So this talent tree will not just help you get to a location faster, but when you're getting smashed, it will retreat home faster. The march speed does empower that when your march is retreating. So that's why this is kind of a specific Ark of Osiris type of talent tree for Guan Yu, so you have as much march speed as possible. Now, if you really want more March speed for Guan Yu, you could potentially drop some of this side and those three points. I haven't tried it. And you could potentially go for this six March speed as well from the Conquering. And then you'll get um, Bakra Shield. You'll get the Moment of Triumph as well, which I'm not sure how much all this will help. But if you really want more March speed, I didn't find it so helpful because rejuvenate is really good in the end you need to do some uh, skill rotation as well and dropping all for one dropping skill damage rage restoration just to get, put more march speed i didn't find that very beneficial for six percent march speed if you really want more infantry march speed you can go with um, the accessory 
the infantry accessories would, would add a 10.5 <laughs> infantry march speed and then you would get your Guan Yu to be even faster. In terms of equipment that you can do for Guan Yu, this is something that I roll out with. I go with a lot of defense, but I also like to have a lot of health. Now I could obviously do the defense pants and I could also special talent them, uh, refine them until I get the, the special talent, the expertise. And that will bring me to a total of 16% defense, which is quite a lot over this 10.5 health. But there is nothing else that gives health to the infantry. And I always felt that infantry benefits the most from health rather than defense and attack. That's why I like to keep these two items on my infantry to give it like 21% health. Because I'm getting enough defense from the Hope Cloak, I'm getting enough defense from the helmet, from the, the gloves, from the boots. But eventually in the future, because of the iconic, as more iconic will be introduced and more iconics will be available, I will get the legendary pants as well with 16 defense and probably a weapon as well with attack, which I'm not very happy about the idea. But because of the iconic, I will eventually get there as well. And this is my Trajan, so similarities, very high similarities for my Trajan as well. And um, again, this will change in the future with more defense. As a starting for your infantry gear, you definitely need the infantry helmet and you definitely need the Hope Cloak because there isn't anything else better when it comes to epic. It gives you attack, the epic helmet gives you attack, the epic chest piece for infantry gives you attack. The gloves, the epic one, they give you defense, they are really good. Then you have the pants, which you already see, gives you health. And the epic boots also give you defense. So you can go with the epic boots, epic gloves, but you definitely need the hope cloak and you definitely need a legendary helmet. This is kind of the minimum two legendaries that you want to start on your infantry march. So you pump that defense as high as possible and then you pump the health and more defense with the other items. So I hope you find this video very, very helpful and I hope I did break down Guan Yu as much as possible for 2022. I still like him, I still use him, but I really hope on the next generation of infantry that I will replace him because he doesn't have any kind of damage reduction, not even normal attack, not, not even defense. So I would really like something a little bit with more defensive on the field that will replace him and keep my CPO obviously and do that new commander as well. I think it will be the most ideal for the future. But let's see, you never know. Maybe something even better than CPO comes around and then I might do CPO and Alex and do Guan and the new guy. <laughs> you never know how things gonna roll out. What we want with what's going to happen, it doesn't always pan out. Until next time, this is your boy legend Ronnie signing off. Peace out, you and take care. See you on the next one and stay safe out there, my friends.